baseball food, pizza, wings, and beer. You know, you can bring your kids in, and, you know, they can play pool or play the video games, or they can sit with you and watch TV too, because you got the TVs in every dining room. It's such a place that you can come in with your family and sit down. And, and again, it's family oriented because it's family owned. When you walk in here, it's like a TV show, Cheers. Everybody knows your name. And you can expect that from in here because everybody knows everybody. Sideline Guys, back at sidelineguys.recordernews.com with Michael Kelly and Adam Schinder. We're brought to you, as always, by our friends at Crystal Restaurante. They're located at 72 Lion Street in Amsterdam. And it's uh, week seven, final week of the high school football regular season playoffs just around the corner. And pretty much with the exception of the Broad Alton Perth Patriots, all of our local teams know what they'll be doing and where they'll be playing week one of the playoffs. It'll be uh, down to matchups. And for that, it starts with the Amsterdam Rugged Rams, who have known for a few weeks now. Next Friday night, they will be at home against the number four seed out of the Southeast Division. But right now, they have some business, business to finish up. They want an undefeated regular season. They'll try to do it against Scotia Glantho. Right. And Scotia, I mean, a team that uh, has only beaten Green Tech so far this year. Um, you know, another, uh, another non-league game for Amsterdam after wrapping up their league part of their season uh, through the first five weeks. Um, you know, a final tune-up, they obviously did very well against Colony in their first uh, kind of tune-up for these playoffs. I guess against Scotia, we, uh, we talked two weeks ago about wanting to see the running game, last week about wanting to see the passing game from the Rams. I guess, what do you want to see this week? Uh, the just uh, an overall, what you want to see here is just an overall consistent effort, really. Uh, it's another team where you're going to be seeing something that you haven't really seen all year. Scotia's a triple option team under uh, first year head coach Keith Warren. Not really anything they've seen very much all year, so another different set to adjust to, which is nice. Uh, you'd like to see them play a little bit better uh, defensively than they did uh, in the first half against Colony. And the other thing I'd like to see personally, I'd just like to see them be a little less sloppy than they were at points against Colony. There were some penalties that really didn't need to happen, some uh, defensive mishaps that really didn't need to be there. And that's what Pat, uh, head coach Pat Laverio is going to want. He's going to want things to be cleaned up before the first round of the playoffs. I think that cleaning up starts with that, uh, that defense in the first quarter. Um, I mean... The defense has always recovered this year, but you want to see them get off to a positive start because once you get to the playoffs, uh, you really can't afford you know, to maybe take five, six minutes to warm up like sometimes they have this year. Yeah, when you face an option team, uh, it's a great test of your defensive discipline. You've got to be able to, to read the quarterback. You've got to be able to read the offensive line. Follow the ball at all times. And when this team's been able to know where the ball is going, there's been no one who's able to move the ball on them. When they're, when they're tracking the ball and bringing six, seven guys to tackle, this team is really, really tough to move on. Right, I think when you're playing against an option team, the, the two most important guys on your defense are those ends. And I think Amsterdam's ends this year have been very disciplined uh, for the majority of uh, their play. All right, and then we move to Saturday. Three games on Saturday, and we'll start with really the most important one of them all, the, one that really, the only one that has real postseason implications. Broad Auburn Perth heading out to Hudson Falls. Right, and uh, it's a win and in for the Patriots, which is uh, kind of you know, crazy to think about after the 0-4 start to their season, including the non-league. Um, coming off a game where, I mean, they played with the Bulldogs of Cobble Skill uh, from I mean, up at the half, uh, were able to, I think they actually outgained them in that game. They were right there with them. Um, but just going to be another tough test for them. The winner of this game makes the playoffs. And uh, obviously they would like to have this game at home instead of have to travel. And, uh, and once again, just like they did against uh, Cobleskill last week, Patriots playing a team that's really got kind of dual identities that's looked really good at certain points, that's struggled at other points. But uh, this is a Hudson Falls team that's got some talent and got some big playability. Right, and that's been the Patriots' uh, Achilles heel this year. It kind of reared its head uh, this past week in the second half after uh, eliminating that completely in the Johnstown game. I will say, though, for the Patriots going into this game, the one thing that they have in their favor is that this is not a team that gets down easily. Um, even when they get down, they, they come right back. Uh, it's almost, you know, these past couple of years where they've had these uh, games where they've lost by heavy margins. They, they just don't care. They're going to go out there and play, and that's probably the best attitude to have going into a must-win game. Yeah, I'd say the one thing that's going to really help BP looks like R.J. Pinchatorf from day one through week six. He's been getting better and better as the season's moved on. Right. Well, he, I mean, he started off with a great week one, slightly back in week two, but since then, you're right. He has just gotten better each week, and I think that has a lot more to do with uh, his receivers and his offensive line than him. 
I think he's pretty much been what he's been uh, really for a couple of years now, a third year starter. And uh, just with guys like Percy Steele and Nick Coveney, uh, you know, learning those routes better and that offensive line actually offering him some protection. Uh, it's a young line that early in the season struggled a little bit. Uh, I mean, he's really come around uh, with that whole unit. And now from a team fighting for its playoff life to a team that knows it's going to be home next weekend, the final Fultonville Braves. They've got the number one seed out of the Class C South Division wrapped up. Unfortunately, in Class C, that only means one home game since they moved the semifinals to the neutral sites. But uh, they've got at least one more regular. They've got the one more regular season home game to wrap it up. And they've had a, actually had a, because of the uh, loss of Carol Durham from their schedule. They've actually had a very favorable home schedule. They've played four. They'll end up playing four of their six regular season games at home, and they close out against a, a winless Kaksaki Athens team. Right, and uh, I mean, Kaksaki Athens comes into this game having scored 26 points on the season. Uh, the Braves are averaging 33 points uh, per game. Um, I think this might be a game where maybe you see some backups. Uh, we saw that a little bit in the fourth quarter last week uh, for the Braves' offense. I think you might see uh, Wally Kowalski take uh, maybe most of the second half off, assuming they're ahead by uh, a margin you'd expect them to be up. Um, and I think this might be a, kind of a tune-up game for them, and they make sure they're healthy. And I think that's something Tom Carpenter would really like to be able to have is you know get his team. Where the last few years they've been fighting tooth and nail down to the last day to see who's going to get the first, second, third seed out of the South Division. This week, this year, they've got it wrapped up. I'm sure in, in, in their final regular season home game, they'll give their starters plenty of run, but they should be up in this game well enough that you're going to be able to see Zach Carey, uh, the backup tailback, get some looks, Russ Williams, the backup quarterback, and they'll start to move some guys in for a team that doesn't have a ton of depth uh, on the varsity level, but you'll see some of those JV guys cycle in much as they did in the second half this past weekend against Borisville. Right, well, I mean, and Pat Hart, uh, sophomore running back from that JV team, came in last week, six carries for 45 yards. So it's not even like they're losing a ton when they do go to that bench, but I think you might see that a little bit this week as uh, the Braves were a little banged up in the early portion of their season. And the week finishes off uh, out near Troy, out of Waterville, as uh, the Canterbury Cougars, after a tough loss to Chatham, now they go out and face a Waterville team that's got the number two seed in the South Division wrapped up but it's their home regular season finale, so uh, the Cougars can't be expecting an easy welcome. Right, and I mean, this is uh, the final regular season game for the Cougars. No, they're not going to the playoffs, maybe a crossover game in their future, um, but you know, senior laden team that you've got to expect they're gonna come out with a lot of pride. They want to play this game, and uh, Waterfleet also has a lot to play for, even though uh, they're set in that two seed uh, you know, homecoming senior game for them. Yeah, and as far as, as tough as Canterbury head coach Ken Sullivan took the blame on himself uh, for the loss to Chatham uh, for some of the play calling down near the end of the game. I wouldn't be surprised if this team tries to go big early and uh, maybe try and see if they can't make get that one signature win that seemed to be eluding them all season. It would be a great thing for them to go out on. Right, and I mean they do have that big playability with uh, with Phil Nally throwing a Ryan Hodge or or just Shannon running the ball. I mean this is a team that has weapons on offense. Uh, they've been playing from behind for most of the year. I'm sure they would love to change that in uh, week seven. Week seven certainly will be an interesting one in uh, area high school football. And then next week the playoffs begin. The voyage towards some Section 2 Super Bowls is both Amsterdam and Fonda Fultonville. Know they're going to be number one seeds, the Broad Alton Perth Patriots, hoping to be in next week in a meaningful game. We'll have plenty of looks at the playoffs as things go ahead, but until then, for Michael, I'm Adam, and we'll see you next time at sidelineguys.recorderNews.com.